Hey guys, Churchy here. So I will try to keep this video as spoiler free as I can, um, but I will be showing some gameplay from some of the early missions in some of the faction quest lines. And I'll also sort of be uh, occasionally showing um, clips from some of the later quest lines. But again, I will try and keep it as spoiler free as possible, but this is just a light spoiler warning. Um, but mostly it will just be out of context clips and stuff like no actual like important story points or anything. Um, or major story points. Um, so there's also a couple of issues I will talk about later in the video, but to start with something good, and that's what most of this video will be about, some good stuff from Starfield, um, some stuff that I've really enjoyed. Um, so in previous videos, I've sort of mentioned that the handcrafted stuff in Starfield is where the game really does shine. Um, and I've also mentioned that I thought that some of the environmental storytelling had been a bit lacking. Well, the faction missions. The faction missions are truly uh, where Starfield shines, in my opinion. Um, it really feels like the faction quest lines that you go on are basically the area of the game where, in my opinion, it feels like the heart and soul went, you know? It feels like that's where the passion went. Um, in this video, I want to talk about that, basically, um, and I want to sort of briefly talk about some of the experiences I've had with these quest lines. Um, I've completed the UC Vanguard, the Freestar Rangers, um, Ryujin, and the Crimson Fleet quest lines. Um, and honestly, yeah, it's it's been during all this faction content that I've had the best time with Starfield um, out of any of the gameplay I've done. So. Yeah, really, really enjoyed the faction quests. So the locations you visit in these quest lines, um, they're, the, they're the highest quality of handcrafted content that I've seen in the game. So like most of the areas that you encounter in these quests, they're, they're all um, handcrafted and, and the level of detail, um, it's just kind of sits above some of the other handcrafted stuff. Um, and I feel like they've really kind of stepped up their game a bit in these areas. Like, it, it's just, yeah, it's, there's just a lot more variety and a lot more interesting stuff going on sort of with some of the areas. Um, and on top of that, because these areas are more detailed and they are more unique, um, they're kind of unique enough to the point where the devs have been able to craft more of that, um, environmental kind of uh, storytelling onto those areas. So it's sort of, um, yeah, like these areas also have the best environmental storytelling that I've seen and the, the storytelling's like at that point where it can really expand upon some of the scenarios and lore of the areas that you are kind of like uh, moving through, even completely separate to the main objective that you're trying to do. Um, so that's been really, really cool. They also have the most interesting uh, scripted events and interactions that I've found. Um, again, it's just kind of like, it feels like a step above some of the other stuff maybe, which is great. Um, and, I, and I feel like these are the kind of the most immersive quests and the most immersive missions and stuff that you can kind of find in Starfield. They're like a great opportunity for you to really get immersed. Like, um, the writing, like it does, the, the writing doesn't always land exactly, in my opinion. Like there's a few odd points, and I could be nitpicky and everything, but um, I think that overall, these these stories are basically they're a lot more personal and they're a lot more interesting, I think, than the main quest line. Um, so 100%, I would say, go and do these these faction quests. Um, and you'll probably have a better time than the than the main quest line. I mean, again, it's very subjective to each their own, but just in my opinion, they were a lot more personal, a lot more um, kind of grounded in the universe, maybe, um, and a lot less broad. They were much more like focused and and um, yeah. During all these quests, there was also um, just sometimes there was opportunities to kind of approach the different situations in a couple of different ways. Um, you, you can kind of affect the, the outcomes of certain quests. Usually it's kind of the, the details and the flavor surrounding the, the ultimate kind of outcome or conclusion of a quest. Um, 
but then most times you are just kind of moving through a sequence from from a to b um as you kind of experience the story along the way so just in terms of role playing like you're not going to find massive branching narratives that kind of go off one way and then you follow one route and then you can load a game from hours and hours ago and find something completely different down another branch it's not really like that it's more kind of role playing in terms of um you you're kind of embodying a character and then you're basically flowing through a narrative um that's going to immerse you in being that character and yes you can still influence some of the like i said some of the outcomes and kind of the flavor of the outcomes but you're not going to find yeah massive branches or anything um and i kind of embrace that by making uh a different character to play through each uh faction quest line which are the characters you can see in the uh in the background slideshow going on um which you may get a look at between bits of footage coming up um the the faction quests i feel like is also where you kind of get some of the more unique armor and weapons in the game so again that just further helps you kind of embody the character that you're playing as um, and if you let yourself get immersed in that it's quite fun i basically want to give you guys now some kind of brief examples of um just the the various kind of faction quest lines just a few brief moments that for me kind of highlighted the jumping quality um but then also some examples of some issues that i had so <clears throat> I started out with the Freestar Rangers quest line and basically the moment I started tracking some ruffian dudes through a canyon um, on like the, basically one of the first missions, I really felt the jump in quality. And I mean, even just in terms of like the landscape I was, I was walking through and what I was experiencing in that regard. Um, and that was sort of the first inkling I had that the faction quests were kind of what I had been looking for in Starfield um, and what I'd been hoping for, kind of. Um, it's that classic kind of... It's much more like the the typical Bethesda experience with, a, like, a big big old quest line with, like, story and all that. It feels much more like that, um, which was good in this context. Like, And it's probably even, like, maybe a step above some of their older games in a way. Like, it, it, the, the stuff they've done with the faction quest lines is really, really solid. Um... Next, I played through the UC Vanguard quest line, and this one kind of surprised me. I wasn't sure if I'd be sort of too into it, um, but honestly, for me, like this was this was probably uh, the most fun I've had with Starfield. I would say, like this was the most I've the most immersed I've been just in terms of like the characters and the story and the lore, um, and even just the environments and locations and stuff that you visit. And the gameplay and everything was pretty on point throughout this quest line. Like this, this quest line feels really tight, and and it, like every element comes together really nicely in this quest line. I feel like so it feels like there's been like a lot of work to make this one feel really good. Um, from from the moment of just the you go through like a vanguard orientation, and just from the moment you're in that hall uh, and walking down through it, the things that it teases at and and the lore it kind of explains you can already even from that point kind of feel yourself getting immersed not just in the quest line but like in the world of starfield itself um and i think even if you aren't playing the vanguard quest lines i would highly recommend if you do like lore and you do like story which i think honestly is like part of these games um and that's part of what i look for in these games but yeah if you if you like that sort of stuff i, I definitely would say go to the vanguard orientation hall um, because it has this great kind of walkthrough museum type thing and it's basically just a massive law dump um, and it's pretty cool. It all looks pretty cool. Um, the first quest after the orientation also really pulled me in. This was where this, this quest line was really starting to like dig its teeth into me and really hook me in um, and by, by association of that, it was just hooking me into Starfield. Like the whole... This whole quest line was just really, and again, from these earliest moments, it was really starting to just like pull me into the world and stuff. So basically, the first quest you've after the orientation, you've lost contact with the settlement, um, and then you have to go and find out what's going on. So you arrive, and instantly there's some like nice environmental storytelling. There's some bodies and stuff lying around. You start to realize something's gone horribly wrong, 
and then you basically uh, realize that the the settlement has been wiped out because you talk to a uh, science sort of lady, um, or like yeah, she basically says it was attacked by a creature, a terramorph, and then you see this cool uh, scene of the terramorph basically attacking another creature when you're mucking around with some other stuff. But just that whole sequence of build up and everything. Um, and you've you've already learned a little bit about Terramorph slightly from the earlier orientation that you've done. So just elements like that, they just build upon each other and that continues to happen kind of throughout the quest line. Um, so yeah, the, if, if you were going to do one faction quest line, I would say do the UC Vanguard and just see what you think of the game. Because yeah, for me, it was it was a real highlight. Like... Yeah, and, and there's definitely parts I could nitpick from it, but I don't really want to because I just want to leave it at, like, in my opinion, the UC Vanguard questline is the best that Starfield has to offer. Um, so if you like it, you'll like that. If you don't like it, Starfield's probably not for you. Um, the first few quests I did for Ryujin, Ryujin was a little bit of a mixed bag. Um, I felt like the objectives were kind of a little bit underwhelming in those first missions um and and worse than that was the way you approach those objectives was very simple and kind of disconnected from the reality of what you're actually doing so for example there's one where you basically have to upload like a, a nasty program into a competitor's uh data frame basically like there there's you have to upload nasty software onto the network um but you do this by, you literally just walk into their office, walk to one of their computers, like no one stops you or anything. You just walk in and then you can just crouch and sneak near a computer and then upload the file. Um, no one stops you. No one says like, hey, what are you doing in our building? Blah, blah, blah. There's none of that. It's literally just walk in and do that. And then there was another one that was a bit weird where you travel to another star system and then land on a planet because you need to get like a key card off somebody and then you just like i mean i'm sure there's more to it if you don't just persuade them but then i just persuaded them to give me the key card and then that was it that was all the quest was there was no like use the key card to do something it was just yep you got the key card now you can come back um and that felt very like it was just like bare bones you know it was very like wait really that's it that's that's all i'm doing um thankfully sort of after that point like after these sort of early little things that you're doing the Ryujin quest line does kind of pick up and it, and it just becomes this much more kind of interesting thing um, and there's usually like a couple of opportunities of different ways to kind of approach the objectives like whether you're sneaking around or persuading people of stuff um, and the fact that you do get to sneak around is really cool but I guess one problem is basically that the stealth mechanics kind of hamper this quest line a bit because some of the stealth in the game well the stealth system is basically it, it's a bit janky like it, it just feels a bit off at times and enemies seem to just randomly spot you instantly sometimes and it's just like it needs a bit of work and it detracts from the reusion quest line in my opinion um the crimson fleet quest line this one was actually pretty damn interesting um i had a pretty good time with this one i, I think it's just because Basically, well, there's a bunch of factors. So to start with, the Crimson Fleet's base, the key. That was a really cool area. Um, and there's like some cool shops and NPCs and some and like a cool uh, bar, basically. All of that was really cool. There's a nice variety of kind of criminal and pirate sort of activities that you get up to throughout the quest line. Um, and on top of that, just built in, there's a nice variety of how you can approach those different situations that you find yourself in. Um, whether you just kind of like run around and kill everyone or sneak around a bit or like, again, persuade people to do stuff or whatever. Um, all of that's kind of there. And in that same same vein, <clears throat> excuse me, in that same vein, there's also the option of um, whether you want to kind of be a pirate or work for the United Colonies System Defense as kind of an undercover agent. It sort of gives you that opportunity at the start and then there's like some slight variation of what you're doing and again, a bit more variety in how you can approach things. Um, and in that quest line, there's also a really awesome bit of environmental storytelling. Um, much later in the quest line, I don't really want to say too much, 
but I will just say it involves a, a, the sad fate of a ship's crew. Um, and it, yeah, again, it was just unique location, so there's an opportunity for some really nice environmental storytelling. Unfortunately, there was a couple of issues that I had with this quest line, particularly with this one in terms of immersion. Um, at the start of the quest line, when you do choose, like for, for me, when, at the, when I played through it, I chose to just attack the UC system, death pe uh, system defense people and basically just killed them all on the ship at the start. Um, but the problem was then that there's some characters that are basically marked as essential characters because they come up later on in other quests and in those same quests. But there's nothing like there's no scripted stuff in place to deal with that. Like you just knock them out and they're just like crawling on the ground. Um, there's no like actually like programmed out outcome where they like run away or something or something interesting happens. So it's really immersion breaking when you're killing everyone and then they're just laying on the ground. And the reason why I'll get to this because it just gets worse because you can, once you basically flee this, the the ship you're on you if you try and actually leave by piloting your ship then you just get instantly destroyed anyway um because the, the enemies are automatically like already targeting you you can't use your grav drive or at least i couldn't because i was in combat so it was like you're in combat you can't use your grav drive um and i just get instantly wiped out so you actually and and that's bad enough even if you haven't killed everyone on the ship and you just run to that and then you try and get away that's bad enough. Like you have to actually just go into your ship and then fast travel rather than actually piloting it and undocking um, because you just get wiped basically. Um, but it's even worse when you've gone through and you've like killed everyone on the ship and you've knocked out all these people basically, um, the essential ones. But then they're just still when you leave that you're still getting this voice line about like you really thought you could take on the f the the uh the whole system defense or whatever and you're kind of like bro i just i was just in there murdering all of you like why is there nothing there, there's why is there nothing interesting that happened because of that like um so that one was kind of minor in those terms it was still a bit weird um the worst immersion breaking thing i had was basically later on there's a, a mission where you go on a cruise ship I won't say the details of the mission, but basically you're on this cruise ship. Um, and I went on there and I just saw like a bunch of cloned NPCs. Like it was the same NPC again and again. Um, there are There is some lore about clones and stuff in, in the game in places, but this was just kind of ridiculous because it wasn't actually clones. It was, it was just duplicated NPCs, like out of game stuff, as far as I know. Um, and this particular NPC, it's like this British woman with like a pulled back ponytail. Um, I have seen her in a few different places around the game during different quests and different other random encounters and stuff. But this was just particularly bad because it completely broke my immersion and pulled me completely out of what I was doing because I walked in and there was two of the same NPCs sitting at the table. And even the other characters in the background, there was duplicates of those two, but I didn't really notice that as much until I looked back at the gameplay footage because I was already just so awestruck of like, what the hell's going on when I looked at the, the two just complete clones sitting in front of me. And then I wheeled around and I looked and then on like, there was another third one. And then I went around the corner and there was a fourth one. So I think there was like four in the same room and then like another one in the next room and then like another one in another room not far away which then had like two duplicates of the same dude just standing there as well and the whole thing i was just like what the hell's going on like is this a ship of clones like is there any lore about this like what what is this crap um and like it, it was funny like i'll admit it was funny but it's just kind of like it's just very it really does pull you out completely from what you were doing and you just kind of like lose any sense of immersion you had um and and then like I, I just think it, well it's it's weird that with the game that's got all this procedural stuff there's all that you know the procedural generation and that and I've seen the character creator and I've created a lot of varied characters so it's just so weird that there's so many duplicates sometimes of NPCs like that was really bizarre um, because why can't you just randomize some faces a bit, you know, like, um, 
but yeah, so ultimately, I feel like the faction quests are easily where Starfield is at its best, at least for me. Um, as I said, my favorite was probably the UC Vanguard, just because the lore and the story and characters and everything, it all felt um, very, fl like flowed well, felt tight, felt well structured. Um, again, like I said, few nitpicks I could go into, but I don't want to because I really want to just present this to you guys as like, I think that the UC Vanguard is is the the best quest line that, that Starfield has to offer kind of from what I've experienced. Um, and then probably the Crimson Fleet is a close second. What I liked about that one, even with the immersion breaking stuff, I, I just liked the kind of freedom they were going for with that, just in terms of like the variance in what you can actually do to achieve your goal, how murderous you are or how kind of stealthy you are or how persuasive you are. Um, just the different things of like including different characters or not in like letting them join the fleet and stuff. Just there was a lot of little stuff like that and there was a nice amount of like varied different things you were kind of doing um in the context of being a pirate so that was yeah that was i i did enjoy that one um ryujin and freestar rangers i'd probably rank about the same equal third um the rangers quest line did a decent job of kind of throwing you into some interesting sort of investigation scenarios again it's not so much in the context of like being a detective and like s summarizing all the evidence and everything it's not really like that it's more that like i mentioned earlier that kind of flowing through a narrative from a to b but it's just it does a good job of like putting you in the shoes of just like a ranger out you know i'm investigating this what's going on with this and like yeah so it did that quite well and it was quite enjoyable and has some pretty good moments later on in the quest line um Ryujin, i thought was a pretty good story of just kind of some nasty kind of corporate dealings and corporate interference and, and tactics and backstabbing and stuff and it was kind of that that later on that just got better and better um but i think it really yeah it would have ranked more highly for me if those earlier missions were a bit more fleshed out and a bit more interesting um and if the stealth mechanics weren't as messy as they are in the game um because that really does kind of detract from the experience of the Ryujin quest line a little bit um it felt less that 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 stealth interestingly enough felt less offensive in the crimson fleet quests um even though in the crimson fleet stuff there is also like ample opportunity to sneak around in vents and stuff uh, so not 100 why it felt worse in Ryujin, but it just did um but yeah all of the faction quests like even with the criticisms i've given here um clearly you can tell i enjoyed them they are really good i had a lot of fun with them overall um on balance all the good and the bad the the faction quests were were a lot of fun um and ultimately i think i kind of wish that there was more handcrafted content in the game that was sort of at this level like at the level of these faction quests even if that meant like there was no procedural content and even if it meant there was no outposts in the game um i'd be completely fine with that the the procedural stuff as i've talked about in other videos is very kind of bland and basic and gets very repetitive very quickly um the outposts i will say is just it's very much just the context of being its own thing like you're, you're building more outpost stuff to do more outpost stuff it feels like and maybe occasionally craft weapons and that but most of the materials you'd ever need for that you can just buy from vendors anyway um so even if those two things were completely removed and it gave the devs more time to focus on the handcrafted content and making unique handcrafted locations with unique characters and storylines and, and that uh extra layer of environmental storytelling that you can do in an environment that's actually unique um like I, that would just make me like the game more i think like because it feels like the procedural stuff and all the other stuff they've tried to cram in means that there's been less room to to uh really nail down and make sure that all the handcrafted stuff's really 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 on point um and it kind of it's detracted a little bit from the overall quality of the handcrafted stuff and then it's left less room for the great, great handcrafted stuff like the faction quest lines. Um, so yeah. But, you know, I mean, it is what it is. And I'm sure over time, 
it's all going to get more interesting. Um, I'm sure there's going to be DLCs. I've said this before as well, but I, I'm sure there's going to be DLCs that improve stuff and modding as well is going to be a big thing for all of that. Um, but yeah, definitely want to find more stuff like the faction quest lines in the game and definitely want to see more of that stuff. Um, because yeah, it was just like the, honestly, the faction quest lines, easily the best stuff that I found in Starfield and the most fun that I've had. So yeah, but that is it. Got a bit rambly at the end there, but uh, yeah, thank you guys for watching. Um, and thank you to the legends supporting me on Patreon. I could not be doing this stuff without you guys. And I do really appreciate the support. It does mean a lot. Um, and yeah, have a good day or night, whichever it may be. And I will see you guys in the next video. Give the UC Vanguard quest line a go. I'm telling you, it's, it's good. <laughs> I enjoyed it. Peace.